We have only a foot area in the, uh, the downstream of uh, the river. And when we run the same uh, the same uh, same model with the same parameter with uh, using diffusive wave equation, we had uh, quite different uh, different uh, result. As you can see, we have more flooded area along all along the, the river. And even the the, the, the the depth of the, the water was more important. As you can see. And to compile uh, both uh, both equation, we have this fluid uh, map. Here you can see that uh, you can see that in uh, diffusive wave equation we have uh, more extend. Uh, uh, area and uh, there is a, and uh, for the shallow water question we don't have we have only flood area in downstream. So to conclude, we cannot say uh, which uh, which better uh, numerical method is because we don't have a reference uh, through the. the Fluid map. We can conclude. Uh, we can talk about time and say that uh, explicit uh, explicit uh, sh schema uh, explicit uh, schema uh, scheme uh, need uh, more time to run that uh, implicit uh, scheme. Yeah. Because at the airport, uh, the, 
the, the water uh, depth at the airport and the, the place from where the, the, the inundation starts wasn't the same. Yeah. The airport. Why? Because it was uh, an adult same control and it starts from the, the, the lowest uh, elevation point at the, at the airport, which was uh, going, going to go into a downstream, it was the left uh, side of the airport. Okay, and from a physical point of view, what do you have with the uh, shallow water equation that you don't have with the physical way? You have observed from uh, experiment, numerical experiment, that you have different behavior. And, but from uh, the concept that you have used by considering shallow water equation or diffusive wave, what is the difference for the physical? Yeah, the, 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 energy, the, energy, uh, the inertial part was neglected. To yeah, the but, from yeah from so what is the consequence? Do you have backwater curve effect for the two? No, not the same. Not the same, it wasn't the same behavior. Okay, but what about backwater? Uh, back, backwater is more important in, uh, in uh, shallow water equation, using shallow water equation than the diffuse wave. The diffuse wave. Probably just a quick comment uh, concerning the question of uh, Mr. Durestan. Uh, the time step was about a few seconds. Okay, good. Is there any comments, extra questions for either and so on? I'm still confused. Uh, are you sure you are using the same DM for the two yeah. models? It's very strange. It's very strange. At least for the floating part, I mean, so because obviously on this one you get uh, you get the rows which are blocking the things and not on the other side. I get the same parameter for the two. Strange. Strange. Because in your class you shouldn't. I can switch. Is it a bit too much? Shouldn't one two But then you do not have the same scale for the value. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Let's move to the next uh, team if we can stick to the uh, uh, to the list. Uh, let me see. Uh, yes, eleven. Until the discharge point in the Mediterranean Sea. 
and we'll be using 1D hydraulic model using uh, 1D same penal equations, uh, predominant flow with a consider the assumption of the predominant flow direction that can uh, simulate a steady or unsteady state flow with the uh, general output of the water water depth, the water level and velocities. The software that we're going to use is the MIC 11 that is a hydrodynamic tool for 1D simulation for, that can be used for a complex a river or channel system including floodplains, overtoppings, culverts and other hydraulic um, structures using implicit finite difference schemes and allow, allowing you to use kinematic, diffusive or fully dynamic equation assuming that uh, we have a gradually variable varied flow. So, what is uncertainty? Uh, uncertainty is the lack of confidence in the reliability of something. And that can be related to prediction of future events or physical measurements that are already made or to the general unknown. But we will focus uh, generally and specifically in the epistemic uncertainty that is related to the lack of data or lack of knowledge for, for a specific event. So, the literature review ha, has shown, has made some classification of the sources of the uncertainties coming from the model structure, the model parameters, the boundary conditions and the input data. Where the uncertainties coming from the model structure uh, come primarily from the uh, from the formulas used, being the physically based or empirical. So the empirical ones are the ones that, that has more uncertainties. The simplification done by the formulas, as the like the same and other equation that assumes that we have a, a predominant. Um, predominant direction flow. We have um, the hydrostatic pressure. We have the same water level in the, in, the, in, the, in every cross section, and we calculate the losses of the energy through an empirical equation, as the money equation. Also, the uh, uh, uncertainty is coming from the approximation from numerical methods. But there is no general agreement on how to quantify these model structures and certainties, so they are generally neglected for, for the studies. The uncertainties concerning for the boundary conditions come from the flow rate from stage discharge equation, the QH curve or the rate rating curve, that especially during floods is not applicable when the flow is over the floodplains. And, and the water level uh, is generally not considered as an uncertainty since it can be measured with a high uh, precision and the, the tides timing can, can be um, estimated uh, with high precision also. So in general the boundary condition uncertainties are neglected since the since it is assumed that the data is verified and accurate unless we are dealing with um, with a model to uh, predict something for the future the input data uncertainties comes from the geometry and topography where in the roughness the roughness coefficient where from the geometry we have the uh, and the cross section from, from the river, the points considered for each cross section, the number of cross sections, the, interpola the interpolation between cross sections, the, uh, and the physical uh, dimensions of the, of the uh, uh, hydraulic structures. And from the roughness coefficient, we have the, the, the problem 
that is highly subjective into in, in between a range where different assumptions of different roughness coefficient in different parts can derive for the same at the same value as a result. So can the uncertainty be measured when there are different approach to measure the uncertainties, including the sensitivity analysis, that is, that is what we have done, and other analytical quantification from starting from the input values. So uh, I'm going to put into the uncertainty uh, coming from the geometry uh, of the footplate. Uh, in order to quantify uh, this uh, uncertainty, we choose to simulate three scenarios, changing the shape of the upstream uh, cross-section. We change mainly one cross-section and just put few modifications on uh, each side of this uh, cross-section. So, uh, with the aim to harmonize uh, the river bed uh, where we make the modification. Uh, let's start uh, with the, the comparison in uh, steady flow condition. So, uh, first scenario, we keep the original uh, first section uh, geometry of the model, so the black line. The second scenario uh, in, uh, in the red line, we created a white channel uh, with a trapezoidal chain based on the average of uh, elevation. And the third one, uh, in green, we created a compact channel where the floor will be concentrated. Uh, it is formed by a big channel uh, on the left and a flat channel uh, which is more uh, elevated uh, on the on the right. Uh, for the static flow condition, uh, we are based on the two years return period uh, for uh, 450 cubic meters passable. The 2H cube is the most uh, common to return period uh, for comparing the uh, two cross sections. It's like a uh, normalization uh, value. We obtain the same water elevation for the three scenarios. Uh, let's see. Uh, with different steady flow values. So, we will start the same computing with uh, the median the monthly value calculated over the 45 years data set and uh, the highest daily flow in summer for the previous 10 years and 50 years return period and also uh, the maximum flow option during the 1994 extreme flow. Uh, let's see the, the behavior of the free model. So, uh, on the middle, on the graph, so in the, the black line, uh, we can see the simulation of the original uh, scenario with the five water elevation. Uh, on the right, the path model, we observe that the elevation is slightly lower than the original one for each uh, flow values. On the left, the compact channel. Conversely, we see a higher water elevation uh, than the original model. So, water elevation are pretty similar for each scenario. <coughs> However, we still observe variation on the result uh, that it can be called uncertainty. Now, uh, move on uh, and see the, the behavior of this scenario with an unsteady flow. Mm, we use the uh, input interval that uh, we obtained during the uh, first week of the water interval uh, for the 1994 flow. Mm. We obtained almost pretty similar difference than the steady flow conditions. Uh, during peak flow, uh, the both scenario produced the water elevation uh, close to the original one. Uh, however, uh, we can notice a uh, clearly difference during the, the low flow uh, for the, the white channel scenario. Mm -hmm. 
then uh, I'm going to present about like this. Before we start the uh, simulation, we discussed about what we were studying like So we think uh, this is to understand the impact of lapis coefficient on the discharge <coughs> from water level results. And this is to calibrate the model by adjusting uh, lapis coefficient to match the observed discharge and water level data within regional value of roughness coefficient. Um, and the main regions of our certain case about the hydraulic roughness in the riverbed are um, addressed here. In the first one, every riverbed is recurrent. And so uh, uniformly it can be described. The second reason is uh, vegetation. The vegetation has a big impact on friction. Um, plants grow up and uh, sometimes uh, wet uh, by flood. And in autumn and winter season, leaves drop into the river, uh, which is also influences flatness. And some structures, um, like as sugar and dust, are moved in they make it change the riverbed. Uh, and another region is Mark 11, uh, is the one dimensional mudra. Mm, uh, it is based on cross section. Uh, in BP cross section, everything, every value is approximated. Uh, we pre uh, present every value for the roughness um, the coefficient. Uh, mm, so, um, we used Mike 11 to create <coughs> the comparison for various rapidly spreading. As you can see from the result, the water level is low in the case of red line, which is the temperature of this condition. And the uh, water level uh, is higher in case of the blue line compared to red line, which is the uh, 50 lapis coefficient. And through this simulation, we can understand that the impact of lapis coefficient on the water level measure. So now we're going to talk about the boundary conditions. So to build a, a 1D hydraulic model, we need the, the boundary conditions. So for the boundary conditions, we've uh, studied the, in our project are the input hydrograph and the sea level. So for some uh, uncertainties uh, on the boundary conditions, uh, we have the river uh, distance measurements like the unsteady uh, flow and the influence of the, the wind. Second uh, uncertainty is uh, the rating curve, because sometimes we have to, to interpolate between uh, different values of uh, water depth and uh, also extrapolate to, to cover the, the big uh, values of uh, discharge. And uh, because of uh, this uh, part uh, of extrapolation, the values of discharge uh, will contain some uh, uncertainties. And third, we have the, the presence of uh, unsteady flow uh, conditions. So we run uh, our uh, model for uh, two different inputs. The first one with uh, a uniform uh, rainfall data, and the second one with uh, a distributed rainfall uh, data. So the, the graph uh, represents the water elevation uh, for uh, different uh, inputs. So we see that the, the percentage of uh, uncertainty for the, the average and the maximum water level are 15.7% for the average and 19% for the maximum level. So we can say that the input hydrograph uh, is an important source of uh, uncertainty in the 1D hydraulic model. For the, the sea level, uh, which is uh, considered as uh, a downstream uh, boundary condition, 
So we, in our model, it's assumed the two different positions of the, the sea level, zero meter and uh, zero point uh, six uh, meters. So we can see that the maximum and the average water elevation are almost uh, the same for the two positions of the, the sea level. So these results uh, show uh, clearly that. Uh, the sea level doesn't affect uh, greatly the, the water elevation and we can say that uh, the sea level is not an important uh, source of uh, uncertainty. So, to now summarize what we have found and uh, make a quick conclusion. Uh, the uncertainty from the geometric information does have some influence to our monitoring result, but the influence is not as much as what the reference coefficient and hydrograph can bring. So, uh, and also the influence uh, of the certainty that comes from sea level has very, very limit, uh, limited influence to our monitoring result. So now we can uh, answer the question is that uh, the, in one the hydrogen modeling for the variable money, the main uncertainties are uh, geometry uncertainty, roughness uncertainty, and uh, hydro hydrograph uncertainties. So that's the end of our presentation. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have just a quick question because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm surprised with what the results you get with roughness and hydrograph. You get exactly the same graph or the same value. If you go back to your slide, which is about roughness, yeah. uh, roughness, no, the the results, yes, yeah. no, yeah. no, next, this one? okay, this one, so 15 and 19 percent, yes. okay, now move to boundary condition, 15, 19 percent. Uh, are you sure you are plotting the right graph? Because I see two times no. the same. I I think. So. I think it's the same. It looks yes, the same. It's the same. I think we miss by by chance or just no, a mistake? It's a mistake. Okay, okay, so back. that's because I was surprised to see that two times the the story. Okay, questions. No, everyone is convinced. Okay, in that case, we save time and we move to the next one before to uh, to stop. Thank you. So the team number two.
So this part will be the pre-processing part. Um, and here we show like what data we've used to accomplish our task. And we've used the DM resolution for 5 meters, 25 meters, and 50 meters. And we also use the Corian lens cover back 2018 with a resolution of 100 meters. And also we've used the me uh, measured discharge at Na Napoleon Bridge, which was given. And here shows the uh, how we process our data. We mainly use our ArcGIS software, which we use it to remove the bridges from the DEM, which you can see from the uh, picture over there. The gray parts are the bridges that we've removed from the river. And also like we use the ArcGIS software to click quarry um, land cover to our study area and um, to also find the manning it's not really shown clearly over here, but yeah, to also find our manning value for um, the type of land use. So this diagram here shows like our setup for this whole task, which we have mentioned the DMs we used was 5 meters, 25 meters, and 50 meters. So we've used the 25 meters and 50 meters for the Telemac 2D hydraulic models, and we realized like um, this is actually using a lot of time. So we use the 5 meters resolution for the Hakeras 2D hydraulic model, and both for this model we've got the analysis which will be shown in the latter part of this presentation. And we'll now proceed to the Telemac 2D model. <coughs> So Telemark 2D model is known as Telemark Masquerade and uh, it uses 2D, uh, uh, it uses shallow water equations and uh, the finite element numerical scheme for uh, some of them and uh, it uh, calculates water depths and velocities. Uh, so to uh, obtain our results during the pre-processing we had to work uh, on uh, looking new software in addition to uh, generate basimetry uh, and uh, mesh in the um, cellophane file and uh, also boundary conditions file um, that was used uh, further during our uh, run. And uh, also the CAS file uh, includes uh, our parameters of simulation. So uh, it was the discharge data and uh, um, our time step and uh, roughness coefficient that is uh, crucial for uh, all the simulations we have. So now we will proceed to the results section. And uh, here on the, uh, on the first uh, picture you can see that uh, in this case, we've used the 25 meter DEM and uh, two different meshes were used uh, to represent the river and the floodplain uh, that were um, 10 meters uh, for, the, for the riverbed and 25 meters for the floodplain. Uh, so also you can see the water depth on the, uh, uh, on the section nearby. And uh, the maximum was obtained uh, 9 meters uh, that occurred near the uh, bridges. And uh, this result was compared with the 50 meters DEM uh, that is lower resolution. And uh, in this case, uh, mesh was used with 20 meters <coughs> and uh, 50 meters, uh, respectfully to, uh, to the river and uh, the flat plain area. So the result, uh, results of water depth is uh, uh, relatively the same. So the maximum water depth observed is also 10 meters. That is quite close. But uh, we can see that the uh, flooded area is not represented um, as fine as uh, with uh, higher resolution. Uh, so uh, also we face some challenges during running Telemark. Uh, for example, it was quite uh, unstable, so uh, we had uh, several simulation crashes until we finally could get some results. 
and uh, also the high resolution VMs uh, take very long time for computation. Uh, so I'm going to present now the results of HEGRAS. So uh, it's true that to compare to have a good comparison, we should use the same software. But in our case, it's a uh, time issue. So we used HEGRAS to gain time because we, uh, we were uh, like uh, uh, in a hurry. So HEGRAS is a modern hydraulic of water flow through river and channels. So as we know, HEGRAS can do 1D and 2D hydraulic models. So in our uh, model of HECRAS, we use the Manning's coefficient according to the land use map. So we use the land use map, uh, current land cover 2018, with a 100 meter resolution. So our, uh, our simulation was an, an steady flow analysis, and we put as a boundary condition uh, the, high, the measured hydrograph at Napoleon Bridge 3 as uh, upstream uh, boundary condition and normal uh, depth in downstream equal to zero, which is the level of the sea. So as you can see here on the pictures on uh, on the, the, the right side, we have the DEM and we have the mesh. So we keep the same mesh distribution as for the telemark uh, part, with 10 meters for the riverbed and uh, 25 meters for the floodplain and. Here we can see also that uh, the structures uh, of the mesh are uh, mesh are structured. I mean. So we can see also the land cover on the on the picture on the left. So uh, HEGRAS is using the shallow water equation as we, uh, it uh, it uses also the diffusive wave, but in our case we work with the shallow water equation. So you can see here the results of our simulation in this video. With a very fast propagation of the flood at the beginning and then uh, after that you can see that the airport is completely flooded and uh, Cap 3 Cap 3 3000 also which uh, which is uh, represented the reality of what happened in 1994. So, so far, uh, this is the best result we get till now. As for the conclusions, uh, after we came with our results, and uh, uh, we realized that the DM resolution plays a very important role in generating flat maps. Also, uh, the higher the resolution uh, of the DM, the more accurate and reliable are our results, as uh, the, cap the, the capture uh, the structures and the topography uh, better. And for more simulations, um, we saw that the, the higher the DM resolution, the longer it takes to run. Uh, in simulation. And to answer our question, uh, all the DM resolutions that we drive are considered um, acceptable. Uh, with the term acceptable, we uh, mean that uh, they capture the infrastructure and, may, and uh, um, the infrastructure and the topography and they give the proper results, what the proper results for the uh, depths. Um, the best one among all. The optimal one uh, is the DM of 5 meters uh, with a mesh size of 10 meters for the river and 25 meters of the plane. Thank you for your attention. Okay, okay. I, have, I have not understood what you did with the Korean cover. Uh, the coordinate cover is to assign a uh, mining value for each part of the lower part. It's just to, to, to assign the roughness according to the coordinate cover, to the cover of the land use. Okay, it would have been useful to show a map of how you describe, or how you distribute those values, roughnesses.
sorry. It would have been useful. You said you use Corin and cover. It would have been useful to show Corin and cover, and then to show how you implement the manic coefficient according to that. Yeah. Okay. So just uh, uh, just to to clarify, in '94, the commercial center was not included. Only the airport. So it was only left side, so no, no right side, and the extension of the flooding in the upstream part of the valley is much larger than it was. So it was smaller, so smaller than, than it is. No? <coughs> yes? Thank you for the presentation. Uh, could you back to the, the last, uh, go back to the last slide? Uh, yeah, this one. So, uh, I understood that you said that all the DM you tried are acceptable. Yes. So, okay. Uh, do you think that 50 meter DM capture the dikes which surround the river? Yes, that, uh, you know, acceptable and my acceptable, uh, acceptable can be different. So, uh, 50 meter is not the same as 5 meters. For sure, it will not have the, the hydraulic structure like wheels and dikes. Okay, uh, we it's, it's another thing, but I mean, if you don't capture dikes and uh, your water level is lower than dikes, uh, then, uh, well, I mean, if you don't capture them, uh, your result will be completely wrong. Yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's beyond acceptable. Yeah. yeah, well, the question was optimal and acceptable. So for optimal, we define that uh, the higher res uh, high resolution of the EM uh, the most optimal is the one that captures all the dikes and structures. So in this case we were defining 5 meters and uh, well we even tried to run 1 meter but it takes just ages to run so we couldn't represent it unfortunately. So probably we simply have a different definition of acceptable. <laughs> uh, if I can add something, like you have seen on the, the uh, the results of Telemark for the uh, 50 meter resolution we get a bigger uh, area so this is logical because the dikes are not uh, taken into account in this uh, as well. Okay, I, I will give the, the mic to, uh, to Stefan. Just to mention, acceptable is obviously with a specific objective. The objective is not to run the model for the pleasure to run the model because you can take any resolution so that you take 200 meters and then you are very happy, it's very quick, you get results, that's not. No, the objective is obviously to address a specific problem that could be the bridge, that could be the embankment, that could be something like that. So one of the suggestions we can make is to have kind of table which is saying, okay, objective is for the levees, for example, and this is what Constantin said. Obviously, resolution of 15 meters doesn't match. Five or 10 meters could match for, for any reason. For a bridge, you can maybe take it wider and so on. And for other reason, or like like a vegetation row and so on, could be wider. <coughs> Don't forget that you are supposed to use the tool to solve the problem. Yes. So the objective is not to develop a model for the pleasure to have the model. You have to answer to the question. So it's yes, as you said, it depends on the, the aim of the study. The, the question was also for you to analyze and to say, according to this purpose, this is what we can do, and this, this one is not, this is why it was acceptable. You know, so it's uh, different. Thank you. Um, I have a question uh, regarding the slides, the last slide for the telemark, where you have the advantages and disadvantages of telemark. Um, yeah. Challenges and one of the last you mentioned is the poor representation of the buildings of the buildings in the floodplain. Can, uh, can, can you explain why this is a challenge for Telemark? Not for Telemark, no, it's yes. a mistake. It's not clear, but because we use the 15 meters and 25 meters, you are right. It's not the Telemark issue, but it's the DM resolution issue. Yes. yes. Thank you. I have a general problem, but only with your presentation. A digital elevation model is a model to represent elevation. Uh, okay, again. A digital elevation model has nothing to do with numerics. It's a representing something of an elevation. When you're talking about simulation for everyone, you are taking a grid, mesh, or whatever, which represents not only the elevation, it represents also numerical sets. So the diagram 
is something which you have to maybe put as a hard line in the tree under the or something like this. So I do not understand why always you said a DEM is used for the simulation and a DEM is not used for the elevation. A DEM is maybe used to you, to interpolate elevation to a grid. If you have a plane, you don't need to find a resolution. You can take a very, let's say, coarse resolution. If you have a dike line with a small distance, of course, you make a fine resolution. If you want to represent buildings, you need a fine grid. Not due to the innovation, because of the structures. So I think well, this is what we have to maybe to change. We have to teach the students that grid modeling is not taking a DEM and putting as a mesh inside. So no, grid modeling is much more. So it's not your fault. Uh, so I don't like to see DEM and grid. This is completely different from my point of view. So we have to, let's say, to improve our teaching to make this a little bit more clear for the students. Maybe the last comment. <laughs>